wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala amma ba'du the last class we had in Nahlwada we talked about asma'ul ishara the pointing pronouns we talked about them being ultimately right that and the right and then and ten and ula and that this hat was the hat a harf ten b right and so on and so forth anyway for the most part that got a little bit complicated or it could be complicated so we just said we just need to know how the how the he that he ka tilka right how will i e will i e no all right well that you go so on and so forth could be hatan 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 for dual hatan and these can become hatain hatain if they are mensub or majroor we also talked about alladhi right the ismu mosula so on and so forth. In this class, then we'll talk about Naib al Fa'il Awalin and we'll see if we get if we finish. Naib al Fa'il, the word Naib basically means like a uh, like like the word vice, like vice principal or something, right? One who is in charge in place of something. Right? A representative. A delegate or something like that, right? So the represent the representative of the file. The doer of the verb. So if we read these first four on this column, right? First column. Fataha al waladu al baba. Fataha. Is it a noun, a verb, or a harf? Verb. Past tense or present tense? No, past tense. Pre a, a present tense verb. A present tense verb. Is always going to have a ya, a ta, a noon, or an alif. Right? These are our four letters of mudare, of present tense. So it's always going to be like that. Right? Fataha is on the scale of jalasa or anything else. Right? Like we have. So, Fataha, he opened Al Waladu. Who opened it? Al Waladu. How do we know the boy did it? The Dhamma. Right? We know that is the Fa'il because of the Dhamma. The sign, because it's Marfu'a. Al Baba, he opened the, the door. The door is the object. Maf'ulun bihi mensub. Right? We have Akal al Fa'ru al Jubna. Akala, past tense verb. Right? Al Fa'ru, the mouse. The mouse ate. How do we know it's the mouse who ate? Because it's the, because it's Marfu. Al Jubna, the cheese. Jubman is cheese. How do we know that he ate the cheese? Because it is 
منسوب مفعول به and we have كسرت الحرة الإناء كسرت is a past tense verb meaning to break الحرة الحرة is the cat right الحرة is another word for قط We know this word. We've heard it. I would have to say, al hirra. We've heard it at least, yeah, at least a couple hundred times. Abu Huraira. Huraira is a small hir. Hir is a cat. Huraira is a small cat. Right. So. قصرت الحرة تو showing us the cat is the one that broke this kasra here is for reading purposes right so we don't have two sukuns next to each other الإناء الإناء is the vessel the dish whatever it might be right the bowl إناء كسرت الحرة الإناء مفعول به منسوب. I thought you said it all. Uh, present tense verbs had a uh, ta, no, yeah. <laughs> okay, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a present tense verb. He, the cat broke. But I thought you said they had the they, present tense verb had the tie. Yeah. No. Yeah, but this is not a present no. tense verb. On the beginning. We're talking about in the beginning. Oh, okay. Yeftahu. Teftahu. Yeftahuna. Neftahu. Eftahu. Yakulu. Takulu. Here, this tie is called the tie tatneeth, a sakina. The the feminine ta, which is, has a sukun on it, right? Has a sukun. Except here it doesn't have it because of the iltiqa asakinain, the, the meeting of the two sukun. So we put a kasra on it, just for reading purposes. Then we have, qatafat al bintu azahrata. Qatafat, qatafat, to pick. Right to pick. Al bintu, al bintu is your fa'il. Right, al bintu is your fa'il. How do we know? It's more for. She's the one who picked. Right. Al zahrata, al zahrata, the flower. Right, the flower. Mephulum be men so the girl picked the flower. This cusser again here is for reading purposes. Right? Okay. Now look at the examples across from it. In this column. The second column. Futiha al Babu. Futiha al babu. Futiha, as we've come to know, is called majhul, right? Passive. We've come to learn that every verb, when it's passive in the past tense, is going to be on this scale. Ui. You're going to have a dhamma on your first letter and a kasra on your second. And we could say a fatah on your third, but if you have, for instance, uh, a, a pronoun here or something at the end, then this would have a sukun 
and so since it's not 100% the rule then we don't we don't say that but basically our scale for past tense majhul passive is going to be futiha fu'ila ukila kusira futifa right julisa dukhila khurija whatever verb you pick is going to be on u'ia that's going to be your majhul your passive And if you're paying attention to the Arabic of this, then the word majhul comes from the same word as jahiliyyah, ignorance. You don't know things. So when Imam Malik rahimahullah was asked about istiwa, about the rising of Allah above his throne, kayf istiwa, how is the istiwa, he said, after dropping his head a long time and getting red and, and, and upset and, and nervous about what why is someone asking a question like this because this is a horrible thing he said al istiwa ma'loom right well kayf majhul and the how is majhul unknown right if you have a narrator in hadith where you don't know who he is. We said Abdullah. And it could be in this person who's narrating from him, say Hassan, right? Is narrating on Abdullah, and Hassan narrates on seven people named Abdullah. This Abdullah is Majhul. We don't know who which one it is. We don't know. Or if it says, for instance, Rajulan, Hassan, Qalu Hadathana Rajulan, a man narrated to us. This is called Majhul. In English, the term is passive in English. Right? We talk about verbs. We have here, Fataha, he opened. Here we have Futiha, it was opened. In English, that's passive speech. Right, but in Arabic, it's called majhul. Right, not that majhul translates to to passive, but that it's it's equivalent. You understand? Majhul means unknown. While fataha is ma'roof. It's ma'roof, meaning known. Something which is arifa, ma'roof, it's known. Right? Meaning we know who did it. We know who did it. Majhul, we don't know who did it. We just know what was done. Right? Futiha al-babu. The door was opened. Right? What was opened? Al-Babu. Same thing here. Fataha al-Waladu al-Baba. Right? In this sentence over here on this right side, when underneath the red arrow, we know the fa'il and we have the maf'ulun bihi. This sentence, every one of them, all three of them, we have the fa the fail. You have your fail, you have your fa'il, and you have your maf'ulun bihi. All of them. Fail, fa'il, maf'ulun bihi. Here, in this second column, we're going to have the fail, and you're going to have what we call here. Naib al Fa'il, the representative of the Fa'il. Right? That's what it's called. So, Futiha, we don't know who's doing the action here. Even if we said Fatah al Bab and we didn't have al Walid, then the Fa'il would be Mustatir. It would be hidden inside of there. He did it because it would be hidden 
inside of the verb itself, right? He opened the door. Here, Futiha al Babu. The door was opened. We have no idea who did it, right? We have no idea who did it. The janitor, the teacher, the student, the principal, right? A parent who is coming to check on a kid. Don't we don't know who opened the door, right? But it was open. Now, when it's majhul like this, when it's majhul, then what was the object here? The object of the opening, fataha al babu. He opened what? He opened the door Futiha it was opened it was opened this what here was the maf'ulun bihi now becomes na'ibul fa'il na'ibul fa'il it becomes the representative of the file because what was opened what what was the thing here it is the Right, the bab. Same thing. Ukila al okay. Huh? Go ahead. That's okay. I got it. Mm. So I was trying to figure out what was going on with I see now. It represents the file. file. Right. Like wallet. wallet. Right. No, it's bab. Right. Okay. What is that? It's not. I got it. Well, wallet here is your, the one who opened it. Here we don't know who opened it, right? Here we do not know who did the opening. However, the verb isn't talking about who did the opening, right? The verb is more talking about what was opened. So therefore, what was opened becomes na'ib al-fa'il, becomes the representative of that. Here, we know who did the opening. Fataha. He did it. And it's even written expressly after that, Al-Waladu. But here, we don't know who did the opening, but we know what was open. But if I said, Futiha, it was opened. What was opened, right? Just like if I said, Fataha, he opened. Who is he? Futiha, it was open. What is it? Al Bab, right? Ukila al Jubnu. Ukila al Jubnu. The cheese was eaten. Kusira al Inau. Kusira al Inau. The bowl was broken. Right? The bowl was broken. Kutifat al-Zahratu. Kutifat al-Zahratu. The flower was picked. Now, all of them are on that pattern. Futiha, Ukila, Kusira, Kutifa. If we look here, our first three examples, our maf'ulun bihi was masculine, mudhakkar. Here, our na'ib al-fa'il is mudhakkar and our verb is mudhakkar. Now here in this number three, kasarat, it says here kasarat, feminine, because the hirra was the one doing it. But because the ina is the na'ib al-fa'il, we go to a masculine, kusira, because this ina is masculine. And then, Khutifat was feminine. Khatafat al-bintu, al-zahrata, it's feminine because the bint is the one who did it. Khutifat is still feminine because what she picked or what was picked is feminine. So, the same way that the fair in this first column here, Represents the fa'il. So when it's a mask, when it's a masculine thing doing the fail, then it's a masculine verb. 
When it's a feminine thing doing the field, then it's a feminine verb. Same thing on the niable file. When your niable file is masculine, then your verb is masculine. When your niable file is feminine, then your verb is feminine. Now, those were past tense. Here comes present tense. Tajma'u al-namlatu al-ghida. Tajma'u. See, we got our ta there, Abdullah, for present tense. No. Right? Tajma'u. They gather al-namlatu, the ants. Al-namlatu tajma'u. The ants they gather. Who gathers? The ants. That's your file. Al-ghida'a. Al-ghida'a maf'ulun bihi mansu, meaning the nutrition, their food basically, right? They gather their food, their nutrition. Tajma'u al-namlatu al-ghida'a, it's present tense. The ants gather their food, their nutrition. Yarkabu aliyun al-hisanu, al-hisana, asif. Yarkabu we got our present tense, ya yeah, there. Yarkabu, to, to ride, to mount. Ali, Ali is the file. He's the one doing it. Ali rode, right? Al-Hisana. Al-Hisana mafulun bi mansub. Right? Tahlubu al-mar'atu al-baqarata. Tahlubu, from... Ha lamba or halib. Tahlubu to milk. Al maratu, the woman milked. Or is milking rather, not past tense. The woman is milking. Al baqarata. We know al mar'a is the file because of the marfu there, right? The sign of being marfu. Al baqarata. Maf'ulun bihi mansu. The woman milked. Or is milking the cow. To have Again, we have our ta for present tense. Right? To have the boo al muallim al to al benta. To have meaning to discipline, to teach manners. Al muallim to. Marfu is your file, the female teacher. Muallim, muallima. Female teacher. Al binta. She is disciplining, teaching manners to Al binta, the girl. We have the same thing here. We have every sentence. Every sentence has Fail, File, Maf Ulumbihi. Right? Every sentence. We go to the the sentences across from it. Then we'll see Yujma'u al Ghida Yujma'u Yujma'u Right? Yujma'u al Ghida The food is gathered. This is Majhul. Yujma'u al ghida the nutrition or the food is gathered. Yurkabu al hisanu the horse was rode or is being ridden rather. The horse is being ridden and up above the food is being gathered. Right? It is being gathered. Present tense. Yurkabu al hisan the horse is being ridden. You see how when we say this here, when I translate this, and if I even go up some, if I were to translate these, get rid of some of that stuff there. If I were to translate this, huh? It would be the answer getting the food. Yeah, yeah, but. I'm saying if we translate Futiha al Babu, you say the door was opened. Am I correct? 
Okay. Uh, huh? He said the door was being open. Futiha. It was opened in the past tense. These up here are past tense, Abdullah. These are. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, in the first sentence we would say Fatah al waladu al baba The boy opened the door. The boy here in English is what? The door. The boy oh, the opened the door. It's the what? The subject. The subject. If I say the door was opened, the door is what? The subject. The subject. So if you look at it like that, it becomes clear because the subject is always marfu. Uh -huh. Right? Now, Fatah al Waladu al Baba, the boy opened the door. The door here in English becomes what? The boy opened the door. What is it in English? Uh, and, uh, the object. Yeah, the object. Right. But if I say the door was opened, even though, even in English, the boy opened the door, right? And the door, since I'm starting, use capital, right? The door was opened. Now these are the exact same sentences that we have here in Arabic, right? Exact same sentences. Fataha al waladu al baba and futiha al babu. Now that don't make sense in Arabic. What it does, because if we say the boy opened the door in English, the boy here is the subject. Right? Marfu. If we look here, Marfu, right? He's the subject. We don't have Marfu in English though, right? He opened what? The door? But if I come here, the door was opened, even though the door is the object in the idea of what of it is kind of the object of the verb in the sentence, it is the subject here. It is na'ib al-fa'il. Na'ib al-fa'il is the representative of the fa'il, of the doer. So it is marfu. Right? So the same thing if we look at the rest of them. Akal al faru al jubna, the the cat ate. I mean the mouse ate the cheese. Ukila al jubn, the cheese was eaten. Cheese here is the subject. It's marfu, naib al fire. Right? Kasarat al hiratu al ina, the cat broke the vessel. Kusira al ina, the vessel was broken. The vessel naib al fire. Right? Qatafat al-bintu al-zahrata. The, the girl picked the flower. Right? Qutifat al-zahrata. The flower was picked. Naib al-fa'il. Marfu. Now, same thing. Tajma'u al-namlatu al-ghida'a. The ants gather the food. Yujma'u al-ghida'a. The food is gathered. Yurkabu al hisanu the the horse is being ridden. Tuhlabu al bakaratu the cow is being milked. Right? Tuhadabu al bintu the girl is being disciplined. She's being taught manners. What was here? The object of the verb. When the verb becomes majhul. Then that thing basically becomes the naib al file marfu. The same thing happens in English. The boy opened the door, the door was opened. Right? The same thing. It's just a reversal. It's just a reversal. 
whereas the door here was the object of the verb, when I put a passive verb was opened, that's passive. In English, that's passive. Right? Then what the object became the subject. The same thing happens in Arabic. The object becomes the subject. And so it's marfu. And we call it na'ib al fa'il. The object or the representative of the fa'il. Is that clear? No. Okay, let's read the bath and the naqaida. You have to keep that in your mind a little bit. It says, Unzur ilal amthilati al ar. Look at the first four examples min kismal awal from the first section. Right? Meaning the first column, basically. Tajid an kulli mithal yashtamilu ala fail madi wal fail wal mafulum bi. Then every one of those first four examples on the right side up there. Consisted of a fil a fil madi past tense verb a fa'il and a maf'ulun bi. Thumma wazin kulli mithal minha. Then make a scale, make a weigh it or measure it. Right, every example. Bi mithal aladhi amamahu fi qismathani with the one in the second column. Right. Tajid an al ma'na mutahaddi. Then you find every one of them, right? Mutahaddi here. I don't know how to translate it. It's a it's a grammar term. Basically something uh he said okay, yeah, transitive, yes, transitive. Jazakallah khaira. It's basically transitive, right? The meaning is transitive and that's an English grammar term, right? I never learned it in English. Maybe that's college English or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's transitive. Mutahaddi is transitive. Fi kulli mathalain al mutakabilain. In all of the examples that are facing, that they're facing, right? What to shahid fi amthilati qism thani an al fil madi hadath al taghir fi shaklihi. Then you find that the in the second column, the fil madi, it has some changes to its look. It was fataha, it became futiha. It was akala, it became ukila. It was kasarat, it became kusira. Right? It was tahadhabat, became tuhadhabu. Right? Or whatever the other, the last one was. Where is it? Oh, katafat became kutifat. Right? فَالْحَرْفَ الْأَوَّلْ مِنْهَا صَارَ مَدْمُومًا So the first one, first we had فَتَحَ أَكَلَ كَسَرَ قَطَفَ But in the second example, it became فُ, أُ, كُ, and قُ Right? The first letter, it took a dhamma. And then the second, or the letter next to the last one, it took a kasra. So فُ, تِحَ, أُ, كِلَ Kusira, Kutifa, so on and so forth, right? They're just showing you how you build the Medjhul verb, right? Wa an al fa'il hudifa. And the fa'il was dropped. The doer of it was dropped. The actual doer of the verb was dropped. Wa naba anhu al maf'ulun bihi. And the object, the maf'ulun bihi, came to represent it because the verb was passive, right? فَأَسْبَحَ مَرْفُوعًا بَعْدَ أَنْ كَانَ مَنْسُوبًا So it became marfu' after it was mansub. Is all that clear? Nam. Nam. وَإِذَا وَازَنَتَ الْأَمْثِلَةِ الْأَرْبَعَةِ وَازَنَتَ الْأَمْثِلَةَ الْأَرْبَعَةَ أَثَانِيَةَ فِي الْقِسْمِ الْأَوَّلِ And if you were to make a, uh, basically weigh or make the scale of the 
second four examples, meaning down there in the present tense, right? Bima amamaha fi kusmathani, and what is with them in the second section? Ra'ita an kul kulla mudari'in fi kusma taghir shaklahu. Then in the then you will see that they changed as well. Even the present tense verb changed. Right? Let's go up there and look for a second. He said, Here we have Tajma'u Anamlatu Al Ghida'a. Right? Tajma'u. Anamla here is feminine. So our verb is feminine with that ta. Right? Third person feminine female plural. I mean third person feminine singular. Here is what we have. Yarkabu Ali. Ali Yarkab. Right? Tahlubu Al Maratu. This ta represents the Mara. And to Hadibu Al Mualimatu Al Binta. So this ta representing feminine. When we look over here, al ghidau is masculine. al ghidau is masculine. And since it's the naib of fa'il, its verb is going to become masculine. Because we don't have the ants anymore. We don't have the ants there anymore. So since our naib of fa'il is masculine, our verb is masculine. The same thing here, yarkabu ali was masculine. And the horse was masculine. So our verb stayed masculine. Right? And that's going to compare for these last two. Fatahlubu al maratu, the woman milked the cow. Just so happens to be here that the cow and women are both feminine. So the verb is going to stay feminine even though it's majhul. And the same thing for the last one. But if I were to say, for instance, if I were to have said in this first example, or let me do this again. Just erase just this, this part. If I were to say, Yahlubu. Yahlubu. Al Mar'u. Right? Al Mar'u. Al Baqarata. The man milks the cow. But when I dropped my file, when I when it became passive or majhul, I say tuhlabu al bakara because because just like yujma'u changed from tajma'u, then yahlubu would change to tuhlabu because my naibul file is feminine, so therefore my verb would have to be feminine, right? So what he's trying to show us in this. Second paragraph down there was the verb is going to change according to the not able file, right? So either wasanta al amthila, huh? Huh? I got it sort of kind of backwards, but I got it. Either wasanta al amthila al arbaata al thaniata fi al qism al awwal. If in the first column, if you were to put them on a balance on a scale. Bima amamaha fi kismathani with what is in front of him at the second column. Ra'ita an kullum mada an kullum madari an fi kisman taqir shaklo. You're gonna see that the verb changed. Same thing. So it was tajma'u. It became yujma'u. Fasara. So it became awaluhu madmuman. Right. Basically, he's just showing you how you make the verb maj majhul in the present tense. So the first, the first letter became where it was tajma'u, right, or tahlubu. Then it became yujma'u, tuhlabu, yurkabu, tuhadhabu. So the first that 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 letter of that letter of present tense takes a dhamma. Fasara awalahu madmumen becomes madmum in the dhamma. Well, harf al-ladhi qabla akhirahu 
maftuhan and the letter before the end becomes maftuh so yujma'u yurka'bu tuhlabu tuhadhabu showing you how you make the majhul that's all he's showing us here wa ra'ayta aydan and you saw also an al-fa'il hudhifa that the file was dropped or hidden right dropped وَنَّابَ عَنْهُ الْمَفْعُولٌ بِهِ And the مَفْعُولٌ بِهِ became a representative of it. فَصَارَ مَرْفُوعًا بَعْدَ أَنْ كَانَ مَنْسُوبًا So it became marfu after it was mansub. هَذَا الْمَفْعُولٌ بِهِ الَّذِي أَصْبَحَ مَرْفُوعًا فِي الْأَمْثِلَةِ قِسْمَ الثَّانِي جَمِيعُهَا يُسَمَّ نَائِبُ الْفَعْلِ So this مَفْعُولٌ بِهِ which became Marfu, it was mensub, but now it's marfu. All of them, in all these above examples, is now called the naib al fa'il. The naib al fa'il, the representative of the fa'il. With the ta'amalta al amthilata al rabi' wa sabi' wa thamin. And if you were to look at and to contemplate on the Examples 4, 7, and 8. Alimta bil bidaha an an na'ib al fa'il idha kana mu'annathan kana fa'il mu'annathan aydan. So we'll go up for a second and look at 4, 7, and 8. Alright, 4, 7, and 8. Four. Qatafat al bintu al zahrata. Qutifat. Here, our na'ib al fa'il is feminine, so therefore our verb is feminine. Same thing down here. Na'ib al fa'il is feminine, our verb is feminine. Na'ib al fa'il is feminine, our verb is feminine. In four, seven, and eight. And if our na'ib al is marfu, I mean uh, masculine, then it's going to be masculine. The same way it was feminine here and it changed to being masculine. So, in other words, I think a better way to have said that would have been that the verb must match the na'ib al If you use a masculine na'ib al then the verb is going to be masculine. If you use a feminine, then it's going to be feminine. That's the way I was looking at it. Right. Al Qawaid. He said it. He just said it in like a roundabout way. You know what I mean? The rules here. Na'ib al fa'il. Ismu marfu. Right? It's a noun which is marfu. Halla mahalla al fa'il ba'da hadfihi. Basically, it's the condition of the condition of the. File. It basically it takes the place of the file. It take, its condition is a condition of the file after it was dropped. إذا أصنيد الفعل إلى نائب الفعل وكان ماضيا. Now he's showing you in this قاعده number ninety one. He's showing you how to make it a. Let me see. Uh, how to make it into being majhul, right? So, if it is connected to a naib file, this is asnada, like isnad, the chain, right? If the verb is connected to a naib file, then, and, it, and it's in the past tense, then we're going to put a dhamma on the first one, and a kasra on the letter, before the end because it could be a four letter or a five letter so the letter before the end we put a kasra right the second to last letter we put a kasra so wusila wusilat wusiltu right wusilta wusiltuma wusiltu wusilu all of this whatever form because it could take the, the whole conjugation not every verb is going to make the whole conjugation and make sense, but technically you could conjugate it. Wusila, wusila, wusilu. 
وصلت وصلتا وصلنا وصلتا وصل ان ا كيك بي فور اك فور اول اوف ذم اوكيلا اوكيلا اوكيلو اوكيلات اوكيلاتا اوكيلنا اوكيلتا اوكيلتما اوكيلتم يو كيك كانجيجيت ذم رايت سو وصل بيسكلي ذا تيلنج اس وان كان مضارعا سو ويل سي يصل ويل يوز ذا سيم وان But we'll use the same verb, but present tense. When can a mudari, and if it's present tense, dhamma awwaluhu. Right? Wa futiha al harf aladi qabl al akhira. Then yusalu. Right? Wa al fi'l aladi yahdufu fihi, yahdufu fihi, hadha tariya yusamma mabniyan lil majhoo. So, so far we've all been saying this verb is majhul. Here he's given us, we say, mebni lil majhul. Mebni lil majhul. That would be the complete name. Mebni lil majhul. Right? Qaida 92. Ida kana na'ib al-fa'il mu'annathan kana fil mu'annathan. If the na'ib al-fa'il is mu'annath, then the fi'l is mu'annath. Wa idha kana na'ib al-fa'il mudhakkaran, kana al-fi'l mudhakkaran. I just said that, right? And if the na'ib al-fa'il was masculine, then the fi'l is going to be masculine. Right? Any questions about that? Oh, that's it. Well, that's it. That's it for that, brother. <laughs> there is there is no more to that. That's I mean that's the chapter. You know what I mean? You, you can't really enter into the next chapter because the the time won't allow us to to address it. You know. But this is this is the Naible file. So when we ever whenever we talk about the verb being majhul, and like we said. When we looked at the English, it's not a foreign concept because the same thing happens in English, but we just don't have these names for it. But the same things happen. The boy opened the door, right? We have a subject, and the door is your object. And the verb is active. Opened, that's an active verb. Was opened is a passive verb, right? That's passive. Whenever you put this was something, then it's passive. Right? So now the door was opened. What was the object became our subject. That's how we look at it in English, too. I mean, in Arabic as well. Fatahel waladu al baba. The boy opened the door. When it became futiha, right? What was our object becomes our subject. Futiha al babu. And our subject is always going to be marfu. Right, because fa'il could, I always say the doer of the verb, but technically the file is the subject of the verb. Right, file is the subject of the verb, the boy opened. We have another subject, which is also marfu'a, the mubtada. Right, your mubtada is always marfu'a. Always. So your subject is always marfu'a. Right? Your subject is always marfu'a. Your fa whether it's your mubtada in a verbal sentence. I mean in, an, in a nominal sentence. So you have a nominal sentence. Uh, such as in Muhammadun Rasulullah. Muhammadun is your subject. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. That's your subject. It's marfu'a. Or if it's in a verbal sentence, such as in Fatah al Waladu al Baba, the boy opened the door. Your subject is always going to be marfu'a. The issue is when you have a passive verb, a majhul, right? A majhul verb, then you don't have a fa'il and you don't have a mubtada. So what do you have? You have what's called na'ibul fa'il. 
That's what we basically learned. So all of that can be summarized in that. Everything we learned can be summarized inside of there. Your subject is always marfu. Subject, always marfu, always. Subject, marfu, always. Right? Whether that subject is the mubtada, the fa'il, or what we have here, na'ib al fa'il. Because mubtada is in a nominal sentence. Right? Fa'il is in a a verbal sentence. Not able to file here is in a verbal sentence, but the, but the, it's passive, right? So your subject is always going to be, right? Marfu. But because, like we said, in the passive sentence, right? In the passive sentence. In the passive sentence. This is a verbal sentence. Jumla is a verbal sentence. However, however, we don't have a file such as in fataha. We don't know who it is because it's majhul. So we have what's called naib al file, which in a regular sentence, which would be called a maf'ulun bihi, and it would be mensub. Same as in English. Same thing happened to us in English down below. The boy opened the door. The door was opened. No. Yeah, okay, I mean, what are you saying, Ab Abu Samaya? We already said that. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just the, it's just the way we were taught to quickly understand it. Yeah, I mean, we already... We, 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 we read that inside the kai, inside the kai, and we read that. Yeah. Yeah. But this is much shorter than what is there. So that's the way the teacher taught us that. Yeah. He said, "Ila usnida al fair, ila naib al fair, wa kan maadin." Right? Dama awalu wa kasr harf aladi qabla akhiru. That's shorter than yours. That's longer than yours. Awul mutaharrik fihi madmum wa ma qabla akhir maksur. Same thing. How is that shorter? Here's madian and definition. When can mudarian definition. <laughs> Same thing. No. 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 So. That's that's this. That's this. I mean, as long as we can understand that. And the good thing about it is the same thing happens in English. So that makes us understand. Right? That makes us understand that this is this is not like a foreign concept to Arabic and thing. The same thing happens to us in English. Right? So if you want to say Mebni Lil Majhul or you want to say Majhul, it's not a problem. Right? The point is you want to know that it is Majhul. Right? How do we make it majhul? Akala ukila. Jalasa julisa. Dakhala dukhila. Kharaja khurija. Daraba duriba. Right? Shariba shuriba. All of them. No matter what. For instance, we had akala. It became u ki la. We had. The next thing we had, shariba. Now here, we got a kasra here, right? Already, there's something changed because this fata fata fata. So this is fata kasra fata. Does something change? No, it's going to be shuriba. Right? Your majhul, no matter what your scale is here, this could be fata 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 kasra fata or daufa. For instance, fata dama fata doesn't matter. It's going to be duifa, right? How your scale was in the beginning doesn't matter. If it was 
a a a a i a i a or a o a that doesn't matter whenever it becomes majhul is going to be ukila shuriba duifa it's always going to be u e a for example on the scale you got to then you have to learn how to uh, conjugate the verbs in your chart here but we should have been doing that right abdullah yeah. Should have been doing it. Should have been doing that. Oh yeah, that's it. Because the next chapter is dealing with my dama, and that takes more time to explain than you know five or ten minutes that we had left. All right. My dama is going to take us more time than we have left. Right, so therefore, we'll talk about that, inshallah, next next week. Right, we're almost done with the section, uh, the second section. One, two. Right, uh, three, four, four more, four more sections, and then I'll go back over those sections that we skipped too. To some degree, I've been talking to a few people about it, and one brother or two brothers are actually coming to my house tonight. Inshallah, we're gonna go over it a little bit. The section on ad al an al mudmara when an is basically hidden, but it still has an effect, right? When an is hidden inside from the sentence, basically khudifa, it's dropped or something, but it still has an effect, right? It still does its thing, even though you don't see N there, right? So they're going to come over and they say, this is one of the hardest things. This is one of the hardest chapters in grammar. So we may, when we finish <clears throat> this section, we may go back and just do those sections just to go over it. And even though we know it's going to be difficult on us, maybe to grasp and to, to keep in mind, it, the An al Mudmara, they say, is one of the hardest things. And then we'll be finished with chapter or the section, section, second section of this book. And we will do a quick review. But a quick review, right? We don't need to go over it in great detail. We'll just do a quick review. We'll cover five, six, seven chapters in a day. And then we'll start section three, Bidni Lot. Play up. Sure. All right, I'll see y'all tomorrow with. متون طالب العلم بإذن الله سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله